All right. Welcome, everybody, to uh, tonight's Pacific Men's Soccer Virtual Meet and Greet. I'm uh, Aaron Morales. I'm the Director of Athletics for Pacific Athletic Foundation. And just want to thank you guys for joining us tonight and taking time out of your night to uh, join us for this special event. Um, obviously, we'd love to be having this event in person and be able to, to join, the, join our team in supporting them at their games. But um, we've been in the unfortunate position of not being able to join our players. And so uh, we still wanted to take this opportunity to be able to, to learn a little bit more about the team and get to know our Tigers um, on tonight's Tiger Talk event. And also um, really want to express our appreciation and thank you for all of your support during this challenging time. Our parents, our alumni, our PF members for your ongoing support as uh, we've, we've definitely experienced some, some obstacles and some challenges, but we've been able to overcome them. And through your support, uh, that's what, what's been able to help us get us through uh, a time like this. And so wanted to welcome you guys. Thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to tonight's host, Zach Bay Rudy. Thanks, Aaron. And uh, thanks everyone for, for being here. And thanks to the players and coaches for, uh, for being here as well. It's great to have you. I hope we can actually do some of these events in person as far as the meet the team events. I, I really miss having them in person and at cool venues, but, uh, but this has been a pretty good venue for us over the last year. So we're, we're grateful to at least have Zoom. Uh, welcome to the uh, men's soccer meet the team event. Uh, we're going to jump right into it and I'm, I'm going to introduce head coach Adam Reeves uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit with coach Reeves and then he'll give you a chance to meet his support staff as well. Um, but coach, uh, first and foremost, how are you? We're doing all right. We're managing, we're managing, we're going through some growing pains on the field and, and, um, a little bit expected, a little bit unexpected during this time. Um, it's been a little bit start and stop since, since we arrived here on campus, but overall, I, I think I, I'm extremely proud of the group for, for how they manage the situation dating back to the fall and, and having to be so isolated in, in uh, their own rooms and the residence halls and, and even in small little cohorts just to get training going. Um, I thought they did a great job with that. And we, we kind of uh, really hammered home the, the choices and decisions that they have to make every day. And, and especially during this time, how important those decisions and how magnified those decisions are. And, and they've all been uh, responsible with, with um, their decisions and, and so far so good. We've gotten through uh, with, without any positive cases since we've been back together. Obviously over the holiday break, we've had, we, we had a couple um, cases that, that hit families and that sort of thing. Um, so, so from that regard, it's been good you know, and we're, we're thrilled to be out on the field every day training and, and playing games. And, you know, I, I've mentioned to the guys how fortunate we are during this time. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of schools in California that, that aren't able to get back. So we're happy to be here and be playing and, and um, competing every day. I know you mentioned uh, growing pains. The, the team is, the record is one in five, but five of the six games have been decided by one goal. And most recently, uh, an overtime to Santa Clara it had a double overtime loss to St. Mary's. Um, the, the one goal decisions, is there any solace to be taken in the fact that, you know, these have been narrow, thin, razor thin margins? Uh, you know, I know it's disappointing to be on the, on the short end most times, but you've been right in there uh, more often than not. Yeah, no, it doesn't make it easier. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we, we look, we, we've talked a lot about the details and, and the, the small little the small little details that, that make, make uh, big differences and they add up. And, and we saw it yesterday on the field. And I thought we had a phenomenal first half and, and Santa Clara, I thought we played them off the park and the game maybe should have been out of reach by halftime. And, and it wasn't, we let them stay in the game a little bit and, and um, maybe took our foot off the gas pedal for, for one reason or another, which we have to solve. And we let them in it and they gain momentum and obviously uh, won in overtime. So we're working on some things and, and we, I think we, we play a nice brand of football and, and we do some really good things. But when the going gets tough and we have to grind, I think that's where the group holistically can get a little better. You and that'll make a big difference. Sure. Uh, you mentioned some of the challenges of the last year. Obviously, we, we know we know what those are, um, you know, in terms of COVID, most everyone's been through them, but uh, what's the biggest challenge been for you as a head coach in essentially uh, between his first and second season when this all happened? Yeah, I think it dated back even before that to, to being hired, 
you know, less than a month before the season's going to start from, from the 2019 season and, and trying to impose a, a new method, a new philosophy on, on not just a new recruiting class, an entire roster of 25. And, and so managing that through, <coughs> through that first season, we were excited to lay a foundation that next spring, which would have been a year ago and, and that got cut short. So, so laying that initial foundation of this is who we are, this is how we do things, this is how we operate uh, on the field, in the locker room, off the field. It, it, there's been, you know, hiccups along the way. Um, and so, you know, now teaching a whole new group of, I believe, 10 newcomers since last January, this in cohorts of eight was, was challenging, you know, was challenging. And, and so we, we still up to um, this point from, from getting back going and still have not been able to play 11 v 11 in training for one reason or another injuries. And, and we did have a couple of COVID cases that, that had to isolate right when we came back. So they missed the first couple of weeks. Um, and then, you know, for one reason or another, you know, we've been hit by the injury bug a little bit. Um, some muscular injuries, it's probably because of the load that's been put on them since we came back from having from having taken so much time off, 400 and some odd days between games. Um, it's hard on the bodies. So um, there, it, it's it's a challenge, but everybody's going through it. And so we're managing and we're doing the best we can. And the guys are taking it in stride and, and learning and growing and developing. I think you alluded to it a little bit. You know, you're trying to take over a program, trying to put your stamp on the program, and, and you really can't go out and sell it in the last year. How have you been able to work around not being able to go out and, and sell the program in the last year, like physically go out and, and, and go see things in person? Well, the good thing is I like this group. It's a bunch of great guys, good players, um, good personalities. And so with the NCAA's decision to – basically essentially make this a free year um we're just we're not going out replacing the cjs and the matis and the maxes and the diegos of the world because um all of them or maybe one who may have some graduate school opportunities will be back in the fall so so at least we have we know what's coming and what'll be here come the fall and we'll have this whole spring together competing um which is a good thing so it's about the recruiting side is uh, for, for the fall has just been about adding depth, maybe filling a couple holes here and there, but, but it hasn't had to be super extensive on our part, thankfully, um, because we like what we have here. I know we're going to get to meet the team here shortly, but from your perspective, can you tell us a little bit about the team this year and, and, uh, and what they bring to the table and what you like about them? Yeah, like I said, I think it's, I, we're a great bunch of guys. You know, they're all they're all extremely great human beings, um, and we see that with with the stuff that happens off the field. Their their academic achievements um, as a group, we were we were over three point two in the fall semester, um, which is a testament to them and a challenge because of the virtual side of learning and not being in the classroom every day and not being forward facing with your professors or or you know a number of them had small group projects or group projects that they're managing through Zoom. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a good football playing group, um, you know, that, that shows it on the field and, and we showed it yesterday for, for long stretches, just not 90 minutes. Uh, we showed it against Portland, we showed it against USF and, and now it's just about putting 90 minutes together. Um, you know, and, and we're incorporating a bunch of new faces that are extremely diverse that come from, uh, all over the country and all over the world for that matter. So, um, it's, it's what a soccer team should be represented like, in my opinion. Last one before I go over to Brian. Uh, what's your vision for Pacific soccer over the next few years in your, in your first few seasons here? Yeah, you know, this group needs to, needs to lay the foundation for who we are and who we want to be, which is, you know, a ball possession, high-pressing team that, that can be dangerous in the attack, but also can be, you know, rock solid defensively and, and we, can, we can compete with, with anybody. You know, and we're not far off. Like I, like I said, we're missing a few little details here and there that we're, we need to clean up. And, and I, I can put this group on the field against anybody. You know, last year, uh, first, first regular season game, 
um, being with the group for three weeks, we go to University of Virginia and and they end up be playing in the national final, losing the national championship. And I thought we made our, did ourselves proud um, and, and a deflected goal to end the first half. Other than that, it's zero, zero at the first, at the end of the half with Pacific having the better chances. And um, we, we've been in every game except the Stanford game, which was a weird game uh, this year. So we're not far off and I'm excited about continuing to push these guys and develop them and, and make them the best, the best soccer players they can be. Awesome. Obviously, we're all excited to, to keep watching. I'm going to jump over to, to Brian Lenoy, who's who's uh, your assistant coach. Uh, Brian, you came over from Cal Poly Pomona uh, with Coach Reeves. How's it been for you so far in Stockton? Uh, it's it's been it's been awesome, actually. The uh, the support from the community has been been um, been one of the highest levels. Um, I actually didn't come straight from Cal Poly with Adam. I got too tired of him and I had to leave him. And he called, he called me back and, and asked me to come join him again. That's what, that's what so, I meant. That's what I meant. So, so I, I did him a favor so I, to come back and join him. But. Reeves, you have anything to say to that? No, it's, it's good for him to, to leave the nest. <laughs> he left the nest a little bit, but then he couldn't, he couldn't leave for that long. So he came back. Nice. Um, talk us through your, your duties as assistant coach. What, what are your primary responsibilities? Um, well, right now, um, I'm actually doing a lot more being, being solo in the office, taking on more of, of the logistics, the day-to-day, the making sure we're organized when we travel, um, make sure we're organized with meals, and then obviously helping planning training sessions and, and talking tactics with Adam and, and organizing the actual soccer side of it. What, uh, what have been the biggest challenges for you in the last year? I know we talked to, to Adam about it, obviously, but I'm sure you've had your own set of challenges to navigate. Um, I think maybe for a lot of us, it's, it's been finding something to compete about, you know, like for me, the, the best part of, of this job is that 20 times a year, you get that pit in your stomach and you get to go compete. And that was absent for so long. So it was about taking things day by day and finding something to win on the day so that you can continue to improve. And, and as I developed as a coach, I had, I had definitely went through similar situations as the guys did where well, when's the end coming? What, what, what am I looking forward to? You know, so to try and find something to compete about and, and get better at was definitely a challenge. Sure. Uh, what's I, I asked coach Reeves, his vision of, of for Pacific soccer over the next few years, what's your vision? I think, I think the, the university itself with, with all athletics, it, it needs to be, this community is so bought into the, to Pacific athletics that we need, we need to grow the, the brand of the program and, and present a, a product on the field that that is that people want to come watch and once once we once we get in stride with that i think this community gets so bought into pacific athletics that that it could skyrocket and take over the central valley area and be the biggest in this in this little pocket yeah i, I would second that uh coach reeves i know you had a couple of uh, sports staff members you wanted to introduce here yeah, I'm going to let them let them introduce themselves because they're not just support staff. They're a huge part of part of our program and we rely on them every single day. And, and um, before we go, let me just, you know, Brian's done a great job, obviously, during COVID. Um, our other former assistant, Luis Trejo, you know, during he decided to um, pursue other interests in life rather than the coaching world. And so we've been, we've been a little shorthanded because the university is on a hiring freeze, Mm -hmm. but Brian, Brian has been phenomenal, stepped up and, and um, gets to the office before the sun rises and, and, you know, gets off his computer late at night. So I'm super appreciative, but moving on, you know, want to introduce Thorne Bradley, who's, who's our men's soccer um, strength conditioning coach and, um, the guys can't get enough of so thorn hey guys yeah thorn bradley i'd love the intro man i appreciate it um you know it's been as everyone before me has already put it it's been nothing short of challenges after challenges after challenges just doing my job but also helping the guys execute what they need to execute during this climate and um the off season that we had you know in the fall leading up to this posed its own challenges, having to train outside, not being able to train inside with our typical equipment, you know, being at the mercy of weather. And um, it's just been, it's been challenge after challenge, but the guys have brought such a level of enthusiasm and um, a willingness to learn that it's made my job 
sort of it's sort of better in a way because what it's done is it's it's challenged me to be a better coach. It's challenged me to be a little bit more flexible. And then it made us extremely thankful when the opportunity came where we could actually train inside. Now, one of the other big challenges that we face is, of course, the fact that we, you know, as a team, tissue wise, we have to keep up with, you know, the expectations of what Adam wants, which is an extremely physically demanding, I mean, a physically capable athlete, which is maybe, maybe the hardest part about that was the fact that we needed to put on some tissue in that short amount of time. Now, as a lot of you may already know with your own endeavors and fitness, it's not easy to change your own body in any circumstance. But doing that during a season, during doing that in such a short turnaround requires a lot of these guys to put themselves in some very, very challenging, physically demanding and tough, uncomfortable places. And to do that in days where, you know, they've been training as well on the field. So they've welcomed that with nothing but open arms and um, I'd say, you know, the biggest, the thing that speaks the, you know, the most about this team is the fact that these guys have the questions. They don't just shake their head. Yes. They want to know why they're doing something. They, they welcome the fact that I want to teach them beyond what we're just doing in the weight room. They're not just A to B athletes. They want to learn why it is that we're doing some of this stuff. Because at the end of the day, I may only be with these guys for, you know, three, four hours in a week. They've got 23 other hours in the day. And in a lot of those hours, they got to make their own decisions. They've got to do some things that help, you know, make sure they're ensuring their bodies are recovering and getting prepared for the next matches. And these guys have done an amazing job as young men, welcoming that learning experience and applying it to their own lives. So it's been, it's been awesome. And, you know, like I said, we didn't have an easy road into this season, making this season happen, but they've done nothing but welcome it. And I, I look forward to seeing the way these grown men continue to, you know, progress through this season, but also into the next for sure. Absolutely. Uh, can you give us a little bit of uh, background info on yourself? Just, uh, just so everybody kind of gets to know you a little better. Yeah, strength and conditioning coach. I'm from a very rural area up here in Northern California, way out behind Yosemite. I grew up without significant, you know, sports being close by in my life, but I pursued soccer and that's what, that's what I played. Now I'm six feet tall and typically, you know, looking at me, you would assume that football was probably my background. <laughs> and obviously, you know, strength and conditioning coaches typically come from an American football background. I mean, it's sort of the stereotype that strength and conditioning is, but being soccer being my first love and having never played football I'm unique in the sense where you know soccer is where my passion lies so it's amazing to be able to dump a lot of that back into the competitive atmosphere of being around this level of soccer now with that said I I really I mean I've only been on the squad as long as Reeves had we sort of joined forces at the exact same time with UOP so we got to kind of learn together what his vision was for what he wanted you know his athlete to look like what he wanted you know, that stature to be. And I find it pretty fun that it happens to be the type of soccer player I was too when I played. So it's been a blast watching these guys put tissue on and grow and just, I mean, you look at this team, they, some of these kids, man, they put on some muscle that would impress any sport, let alone soccer. Totally. Uh, well, I'm, I'm good luck moving forward and, uh, and good luck getting these guys where you want them to be. It sounds like you, uh, you have a, a definite vision and, and everything's kind of falling in step. So, so uh, glad to have you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask the freshman class to unmute themselves. Now, Bree has enabled the, the feature to where you, if you're- Hold on, Zach, we got one, one more. We got one more. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go for it, I apologize. Coming ahead, Dan Daniel Joe is our certified athletic trainer and he's been, he's had his hands full this, this spring, um, trying to get these guys either healthy on the field, making sure they're, there's no uh, COVID in the group, but he's done a phenomenal job. So I uh, want to make sure that Daniel has an opportunity. Yeah, man. D Daniel, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm, you're down on the way bottom right of my, my Zoom here. So I didn't mean to forget about you, but you're, everyone else is kind of like the coaches are all up there. So I got you moved now. So uh, what's up, man? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Uh, my name is Daniel Joe. I'm the certified athletic trainer, as Adam mentioned, for our men's soccer group. And um I've been with this group since, I guess, fall, September of 2019. So um, it's, it's been exciting year last year and very challenging year this year. But I think, um, as everyone says, we're really grateful for the opportunity to be able to actually 
be a part of this community in person and be able to compete, you know? And I know um, it has brought a lot of challenges because of the pandemic, but I, I really give the credit to the staff and the team as well for being disciplined and managing it well that we really haven't had cases while we we're here. And so, um, but general duties for me is um, emergency responder for practices and game coverages. And if they get injured, um, work with our one student health center staff and our an orthopedic center to make sure um, the guys get um, good resources um, so that they can return back to play safely. Um, obviously this year I've had to be the COVID test taker and, um, and also having to communicate with other schools and visiting teams to see if everyone else is negative and everyone else is um, symptom free prior to the competition. So um, that's been definitely a, a learning experience for me, especially this year. Awesome, man. And you're working with CP, right? I am. Yeah. 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 You know, CP is like my road wife, right? Basketball oh, is he? <laughs> outside of this year. We, we roomed together on the road. We didn't, we had separate rooms this year, but for years, uh -huh. uh, CP has been my road wife. So man, <laughs> uh, yeah. He, he's not said a bad word about you. So I would tell you if he did, um, oh, well. <laughs> before we unmute, uh, the players, I'm going to go back to Adam. I think Adam wants to say a couple more things. Yeah. Just want to, want to give a shout out to a few people. Obviously it takes an army, especially in this time to, to develop and raise, um, these guys. And so it, it's, it, I wouldn't be doing anybody justice without giving a shout out to Wendy and Holly and, and Wes and, and the big boss, Janet, for, for all they have done to, to give these guys an opportunity to be on campus, to compete every day, um, to be safe, to work with campus in regards to housing and, and food and, and the whole works. Um, Taylor Wright for, for making sure that, that Mo's getting to class and, and achieving, achieving those straight A's. So um, it, it takes an army and we have a fantastic army here. So uh, I appreciate everything they've done. For sure. Well said, coach. Um, all right. I think now it's time to, uh, to unmute. If you are a part of the freshman class, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves. Um, I think Bree has enabled that feature. If, if not, uh, you know, no, I see people are unmuted, so we're good. Um, so we'll go down and uh, we'll let the freshmen introduce themselves. And then, and then I'll have some questions uh, for Corey Johnson at the end of the freshman. Hello, my name is Corey Johnson and I'm from Redlands, California. I'm uh, majoring in education, and I play the center attacking midfield role. Hi, um, I'm Devin Bellina. I'm born and raised in Stockton. Uh, I'm a HESP major, and I play the position center back. Uh, my name is uh, Kai Sullivan. Uh, I'm from Yokosuka, Japan. My major is uh, business administration. Uh, I'm number 23, and I play right back. Awesome. And those are the three, right? We just have three. I'm not missing anyone. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to get to know Corey a little bit better. Uh, Corey, first of all, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, what's been the trend? What's the transition been like for you going from, from playing high school to, to making the, the jump to division one college? It's, it's definitely been a big jump. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that I had to learn coming here to, to Pacific. It's a lot faster. It's a lot more physical. The technique is much more, you have to be better with it all the time with everything that you do. So yeah, it's taken a, a lot of hard work to get to where we are now, where I'm at now with the team. What was it like going through COVID and preparing to make that transition? Like were you, and were you recruited by Pacific before COVID hit? Um, yes, I was, um, I was, uh, scouted before COVID hit, but with COVID itself, it was kind of a good thing for me because it gave me time to get accustomed to this level. Um, it was, it was a gradual thing that I could have done instead of being thrown in in July and having a season start in August and September, I had a whole two to three months with the team, getting to know the team, getting to be able to play with the team. So it's something that I would never want, but at the same time, it, it's a little bit of a benefit for me in that aspect. For sure. Um, how did you end up? Corey. Oh, sorry. Corey, go ahead. Was actually, Corey actually took a gap year 
and was in Italy when COVID broke out. Oh, okay. And wow. was locked down. How long were you locked down? You couldn't leave your apartment? For, for a whole month. Yeah, I was stuck in my apartment. That was like ground zero, right? For COVID for a while? Yeah. Yeah. Italy was the first spot to get hit outside of China. Wow. Uh, was it was it scary? Um, yes, it was. It was like apocalyptic in some sort. Like when I I was lucky enough to have family out there to be able to stay with. But when I was traveling to go see them, there was nobody on the streets. It was one car and only cops and you had to have a reason to leave. You couldn't even go out to go for a run for only groceries and that's it. So, yeah, that was definitely an, an experience. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's that's one you'll never forget. Um, I guess lastly, how, how did you end up choosing Pacific? Um, well, Adam was actually my coach before here at Pacific. So I knew his philosophy and I knew the way that he played soccer and he wanted us to play soccer. And I was always very attracted to the possession style game. I think it fits who I am very well. So when he approached me to, to come join the team, I – I thought it was a great, great idea. It took me some time to really think about it because I didn't want to force myself into anything right away. But at the end, I knew this was the perfect opportunity for me. So I, I took it and yeah, I'm happy to be here. Love the boys, love the staff, proud to be a Tiger. Awesome, man. We're glad to have you, proud to have you. Uh, thanks for, for uh, enduring this line of questioning. Appreciate it. Of course. Uh, all right, sophomores, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves. And uh, Bree, if you go ahead and do that, I think we're good to go as soon as that's done. And we'll run down the sophomores, and then we'll talk with uh, Emery Rappaport. Hi, my name's Emery Rappaport. Um, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm a center back, and I'm majoring in applied economics. What's up, everybody? My name is Avery Whipple. I am a sophomore biology major from Corvallis, Oregon. I wear number 18 and I'm a center mid. Uh, hello, my name is Kai Lang. I'm from Hiroshima, Japan. Uh, I'm a business major and uh, I play a left wing. Hi guys, I'm Miles Hall. I'm from Birmingham, England. Uh, I'm majoring in business administration. Uh, my jersey number is number 20 and I'm a center mid. Hi, my name is Samuel Saiz. I'm the number, the number 21, and I play as left winger. I'm from Valencia, Spain, and my major is mechanical engineering. Hi, everyone. My name is Samuel Villalta. I'm from Valencia, Spain. My jersey is number 22, and I play as midfielder. Uh, I'm Derek Roque, and I'm from Southgate, California. Uh, my major is uh, mechanical engineering, and I play striker. Awesome. Great to meet you all. Uh, we're going to get to know Emery here a little bit better. He'll represent the sophomore class in our, in our line of questioning here. Uh, so, Emery, uh, first of all, how are you? I'm doing all right. Cool. Uh, you're from Portland, Oregon. And tell us a little bit about your freshman season. You only subbed out once. You started all 14 of your appearances. Were you pleased with how it went? And, and did you expect to play as much as you did in your freshman year? Yeah, I was pleased with how it went. Um, I got a lot of time on the field, which was obviously great for me personally. I didn't have much expectations going into the season just because I didn't really know Adam at that point. I was recruited by the previous coach. Um, but I think I was able to gain trust from my teammates, which helped a lot on the field and gave me an opportunity to uh, show my stuff. What was the recruiting process like? So, you, so it was Ryan Jordan who recruited you? Yeah. Okay. What was that recruiting process like for you? Yeah. Um, I knew Brady Cooper, who's a goalkeeper on the team um, from my time at the Portland Timbers Academy. Um, and he really enjoyed his time here at Pacific. So I kind of reached out to Ryan Jordan and then I went to a camp during spring break during my junior year. And then we just kept talking and I committed at the end um, of my junior year in the summer between my senior year. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. What was it like playing in that, in that development academy, the, the Timbers Development Academy? 
Yeah, it was great. It was uh, it's really challenging. I mean, it's every day. It's against the top guys um, in the in the country. Um, I play with a lot of great players. Um, I'm fortunate to play with the same guys here with Eric and Brady Cooper. Um, but it was a challenge. I mean, there was constantly top players from the state, from the region, coming and training every day, and you had to keep your spot. And but it was it was a great experience overall, though. What was it like uh, last year being part of Coach Reeves's first team and, and kind of laying that foundation for 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 his program moving forward? Yeah, it was great. Um, it was tough. I mean, there was a lot of growing pains, obviously. Um, we were inconsistent, but I think by the end of the season, we started to really understand what he was all about and how we wanted to play and the culture on the field and off the field. I think that really started to show towards the end of the season. Awesome. Uh, what are your goals for the remainder of the season? Um, at this point in the season, um, it's not really personal goals. It's just about getting results. Um, and that starts next week at San Francisco. Um, Sweet. Uh, thanks, Emery. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Got it. Uh, all right, juniors, if you go ahead and unmute yourselves, and we'll go down the list of juniors. Uh, and then we're going to talk with Angel Reyes afterwards. Um, hi, guys. I'm Eric Cotton. Um, my jersey number is zero. I'm a goalkeeper, and I'm an accounting major. Hey guys, my name is Quinn Graham. I'm from Linden, but I was born and raised in Stockton. I'm a center back and I'm a biology major. Hello, my name is Jose Angel Reyes. I'm from Southern California, uh, Los Angeles County. I am a right fullback and my number is six, number six. Hello, um, I am Momura Kamisa Sanuki, uh, number 11. I'm from Tokyo, Japan, and I play defensive center mid. Hello, I'm Cooper Riley. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I play left back. I'm a computer science major, and I'm number 13. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Uh, I'm going to talk with, uh, with Jose now. Uh, from Southern California, Jose, how did you make your way to, to Northern California, to Pacific? Well, um, while I was getting recruited by or actually I was just playing in surf cup, not knowing whether I was going to be recruited for college or not. And, um, my former roommate, Jose Sosa, who transferred to UCLA, uh, and Mamaru Kamasasanuki, I played with them both on my club team. And while they were getting recruited, I actually also got recruited. So that was, you know, a nice, nice to have uh, former teammates going into the college. For sure. Um, by the way, I want to get it get it right. You go by Jose or Angel. You you call me Angel, but my teachers call me Jose. You know. Okay. First thing I, they see. So what do what do you prefer I call you? I'm just gonna ask Angel, you outright. Angel. Angel's Angel, fine. You you got it. You got it. I yes, just want to make sure. <laughs> um, how's this year been for you? And what was it like for you going going through COVID and and leading up to this season? COVID, I, I like to look at things glass half full. So I see it as a blessing in disguise, not only having an extra year, but also just slowing my college experience down because I feel for a lot of people, it goes by real fast and you don't get to actually enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So actually building better relationships with the guys, you know, over this time, even though we're all separated in a sense that we can't be together out uh, outside the field, it, it just slow things down and let me analyze the situation for what it is. And, you know, I have a whole team here, a group of guys I could build and establish real relationships with outside after college. So uh, for me, that that's what I enjoy most. So COVID gotta, wasn't so bad. I got to tell you, man, I love your glass half full perspective. I think a lot, a lot more of us need that, especially after, after COVID and maybe look at, you know, what we gained from, from having to, to endure it um, as opposed to what we lost. Um, how's your experience been at Pacific so far? Um, pretty good. I remember coming in like the, the pace of it and the technical side for me, like it was something that I, I needed to keep up with. So 
So there was a lot of growth from my freshman year till now, I, I think. And, and you know, it's, it's evident because, you know, I went from, you know, not, not really playing a lot my freshman year to now starting every match I'm able to. And I, I enjoy it and I'm excited for the future events. Fantastic. Uh, t- tell us about the, the strongest element of your game in your mind. Well, I, I believe I am a natural athlete. However, so yeah, so I would say, yeah, pace, pace for me, you know, and uh, just being able just to defend decent, being a decent defender. And then also um, my stamina allows me to, you know, join the attack when I can and be able to get back. So for me, it's just the athletic side is really my strong suit. Awesome, man. Uh, thank you so much and, and good luck moving forward. Thank you. I appreciate it. You got it. Uh, last but not least, seniors, if you go ahead and unmute yourselves, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk to the seniors here uh, momentarily. Go for it. Hi, I'm Charles Brewa, but I go by CJ. Um, I play as a defender, center back. I wear the number three on the field. Um, I'm a sociology major, and I'm from Stockton, California. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Matias Sather, but I go by Mati here. Uh, I'm from Olsen, Norway. I'm a car major. Uh, I'm a striker and I wear number 10. Hi, uh, I'm Max, uh, finance major, center back, and I wear number 15. Hello, I'm Diego Villapura. I'm from Stockton, California. I'm a left back and I wear number 17 and I'm a business administration major. Awesome. Thank you, seniors. Uh, and we're going to talk with Diego uh, Villapudua. As you mentioned, Diego, Stockton native from Ben Holt College Prep. What's it, what's it been like to literally play at home? Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I, like, I love that my family is able to come to every game. And I love that my team is able to enjoy my family and get to meet everyone. And CJ and I really support, like really are really thankful for all the support from the community, from old coaches and to friends. Where did you play in town growing up? Like, where did you play youth soccer? Um, I played all the way in Arch Road Complex, going to Manteca, mm-hmm. to McNair High School, and Murata Soccer Complex. Nice. Did, did you know you might want to attend Pacific and stay close to home? Uh, I was new. It would be a great option. Um, and originally, I had wanted to leave town, but I'm glad I stayed because I've created some great friendships and memories. Uh, what's it been like learning from two different coaches and Coach Jordan and Coach Reeves? Um, each coach has their unique playing style, and I've, I'm very grateful to like have two great to have to have had two great coaches, and I'm grateful that they both have recognized my strengths and have been able to incorporate them within the team. Awesome. And uh, what what are your goals after Pacific? Uh, well, due to COVID, uh, us seniors have been grad, uh, granted an extra year of eligibility. So I'll be staying one more semester and I've added a second major and I'll be finishing that up in the fall and being able to play one more semester with the boys. And I'll, after that, I'll be pursuing a marketing analytics job. Fantastic, man. Good luck to you, Diego. Thank you. Appreciate it. For sure. Uh, Before we move ahead, uh, we want to recognize Brady Cooper, Yazid Omri and Ryan Hur. They were supposed to be with us tonight, but they all had class. I think, uh, I think they have the same class together. Is that what is that what I saw, Coach Reeves? There I, is. Yeah. The business class. 110. There you go. Uh, so they were unable to be here tonight. So we just want to recognize those guys as well. Um, all right, we're going to move forward here, and, and we're going to have a little chalk talk here with uh, with Coach Reeves. And uh, you're going to share your screen, Adam, and uh, and uh, you'll talk over, over what we see on the screen. Okay. Are we good? I see it. You see it? Good, good. Okay, so we'll go through uh, this just little intro thing that was put together. So this is our method. This is who we want to be. This is who we strive to become. And and this is something that we day in and day out at training constantly hammer home about understanding our method and who we are, you know, from, from when we gain possession back to what happens. And there's the beautiful thing about our sport is it's a player's game. There's constant decisions. Um, 
hundreds of thousands of decisions every game. So we're either going to decide to push the ball quickly in, in, in transition, um, or we're going to make the decision to, to keep it and get into offensive shape and get numbers into what we consider as good areas, uh, which we'll briefly talk about. And, and ultimately, either way you go, you're trying to find the right penetration to create a scoring opportunity. And when you get a scoring opportunity, there's one of three things that are going to happen. You're going to score, you're going to celebrate and regroup, you're going to lose possession, at which point, you know, we want to, we want to be a team that presses high up the field and wins the ball back quickly. So we're, we're going to immediately press hard and transition and be a little bit at risk. We're pressing hard with numbers up, um, or we're going to miss, we're, we're going to miss the frame, dead ball, a foul, something in, in which we're going to reorganize and then press again. Ultimately, the goal is to win the ball back as high up the field to get possession again and go back. So that that's a little bit about our method. That's what, that's what we train every single day. Um, and, and we'll see a little bit here as the video progresses. So this is, uh, we have some video from the last two weeks. Um, you'll see Ryan gains possession and, and obviously he had his, the first ball went backwards. So we're, we're now into, you know, keeping it and getting, getting numbers to the right area. Something, of, something about who we are, and hopefully it comes out in games, we're, we're all, always going to dominate the, the center of the field. We're always going to play with numbers up inside here and shrink teams. You can already see how many numbers they've brought centrally um, in order to then find penetration. If, if, if they shrink numbers centrally, we're going to find penetration on the width. If they don't want to, we'll just play right through them, which you'll, you'll also see. So we, we, get into, we get into our little possession game. We get nice and expansive, nice and big. Ultimately, we do want to play through these numbers up in the middle of the field. Um, and you can see how we, we now have created an extra number and now they're going to commit to the ball. And so then we find the next extra number. And once we get to this area, boom, we're facing the last line. This is where the, the magic of, of individual talent happens. This is where we're now looking to find penetration you can see a little bit of work by Yazid to Ryan and now we're in behind them and, and we have an opportunity so from this clip you see a lot of aspects of of the method what we went over a decision not to push to get into offensive shape to move the ball um, ultimately to to run at opponents and and find penetration so this one this is this is all encompassing here's a little bit of possession for us we play to one of our sixes who plays to Ryan, who's playing as a 10. And now Sam Samu is looking to run vertically and, and penetrate. Um, it doesn't actually work out, but you can see that the reaction and transition here is what we, we talk about a lot. You can see immediately we have a guy going to the ball, a guy going to the ball, which leads to a throw in in a good area for us, which ultimately led to the first goal yesterday. So you'll, you'll see here now we get clean possession, which means now we can get into big spaces, nice and spread out. And now once we've brought numbers again, narrow, now we're gonna find the width. We talk about advancing on the width, being good, one thing we've really worked on here is committing more numbers into the box. So you can see we need to win our 1v1 battles on the width. And then we're 3v3 in the box, which, which is anytime you're even numbers as an attacking side or numbers up, which is a good thing. Um, ball Ryan gets on the end of it, hits the crossbar, and Yazid's able to hammer home. So for us and our method, it, it was that whole clip was, was pretty much who we, we want to be. Here's a goal. Here's a goal from last weekend. Um, now this is the this is the the transition side and the penetration side. Um, so now we've broken them off a throw in, and Mati does a good job to hold the ball up. And now we're looking to push. We don't need to step on it. We have numbers up. Samu and Diego create two v one on the width against the right back, and we're running hard to get in the box. And now his movement, I think Avery's movements here is great. It's off the back shoulder of the left back. So left back is only focused on the ball, can't see where Avery is. And on the right moment when Diego's going to cross the ball, his movement to get goal side of him is great. And ultimately the defender can't react in time and, and, and you see a goal. So that's, that's a little clip of, 
of us in, in our penetrating moments in transition. Another clip about us. So we step on it. Now we're going to build. Now something we, we constantly hammer home to the guys is we want teams to come after us. We want them to come press because what that does is it opens lots of spaces in behind them, in between them. We, again, will always play with numbers up inside and we want to put those numbers between their lines, the, between their defensive lines. So when teams come after us and we can have 11 guys on the field that are, that are composed and comfortable on the ball, even the goalkeeper like Eric is, then, then it's really going to help us absorb that pressure. No problem. There's a guy running at us. You know, now we're going to come help to play through that pressure. We connect passes straight through the heart of them. And once we do that, now you can, again, see how many numbers are narrow for them. Now we're going to find the width, and we're going to look to penetrate on the width. A nice little combination between Angel and Yazid results in a cross. And, and we've really worked on getting crossers from, from Diego to Samu to Angel a lot more narrow when you can cross from inside the box rather than 11 yards, 12 yards wider near the sideline. It's a lot more dangerous. And so we've done a good job of getting to those areas. And it was just cut out by the center back. This is one of my favorite clips from, from last weekend. Um, again, we always play with we always play with four inside because most teams play with three inside. So we're always numbers up inside. It's a, a 4v3 possession game, essentially. And it's about how can we find the next one. And you can see here, this is the box. And, and each one of them will touch it. Um, to open them up and boom, once Avery gets it, you can see his body shape. It's good. He's on his front foot. And now we're looking to penetrate and, and essentially it's one, two, three, four, and you can't see angel five, but angels out here, five versus their back four. So these are, this was a great moment. It's just as we penetrate. Now we have to make a little bit quicker, better decision here. Again, you can see how we shrunk them. And now we're looking to slip angel in and, and have a better chance at goal. Last little clip is just a combination play on the width. It's, you know, this is just being a soccer player. Angel's a good soccer player. Yazid's a good soccer player. And a good little combination play. And, and you can see the spaces now that we've created um, to get the ball. Again, you're getting this winger narrow to either have a cross or a shot. Um, so you can see some great things. Obviously, now we have to sustain it for, for 90 minutes rather than um, 45, 60, 75 minutes. And, and that's our, that's our challenge. That's my challenge to them. Um, as we continue on here. Awesome. Thank you, coach. That was, uh, that was very insightful. I love chalk talks. Um, I have, unfortunately I have nothing to add to that. I usually would have like a follow-up, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just not, we're not familiar with enough with the soccer X's and O's to, to follow up on that. But that was for me, very insightful. I'm sure for everyone else, too bad. Brie can't, uh, can't jump in here with some, some soccer X's and O's. She's shaking her head. She's not going to, um, we do have some questions, but first I want to, I want to talk with coach Reeves about some of the elements that you might need here moving forward for your program. Um, and, and one of them is, I don't want to mispronounce it, but I want to say, is it, is it speedio? I've, I've, we talked about it earlier, but is it speedio? speedio. Is that what it's called? S speedio is one of our, one of our goals here. Yes. Can you, can you give us some insight as to what that is all about? Speedio is basically an all encompassing video system that allows us to record in, in, 4k it's a it's a mounted camera um that that is recording the entire field and somehow some way through ai you could probably ask max or avery they're they're bright young men so they could probably explain but somehow through ai they they can splice it together and you can you get the best camera quality the best picture um that you can have not only for not only for us and the development of our team and, and watching video, but also on the stream. Um, it, it's just it's a phenomenal system and it, it allows us post game or even in game live breaking down. So if we wanted to show something to the guys that happened it, during the first half at halftime, um, you're able to do that. Um, and it just allows us to in our kind of development teaching world to to take it to the next level. And it's it's a big time system. What's it going to take in terms of resources to be able to get that for the program? The, the initial cost is, is somewhere in the range of, of eight to 10. 
um, eight to 10 grand is what we're, we're shooting for, looking for. And, and that, that would get us off the ground with, with the camera on a pole and, and the, the software on our, on our laptops so we can get to work. And you're looking into some locker room upgrades as well. Yeah. Although it's been over a year now, I think we hit uh, March 6th. I, hit, I think we hit the year anniversary from, from the last time the guys stepped foot in their locker room for obvious safety reasons. But once we get back in there, we want to be able to give them a place that, that is a home away from their dorm or, or a home away from their home. And I, I can reflect on my time as a student athlete and just how many good memories were, were made in, in that locker room setting, whether it's uh, watching video with your coaches or, or just pre-game, post-game, pre-practice, post-practice. I mean, their brothers, a, a couple of them mentioned it on the introduction and, and that's, that's their time together. And so having, having a place where, where they, can, they can relax a little bit, they can get some nutrition in them. I think they've all adjusted well, but, but when we came in, one of our transitions was to move training to the morning. So we get them fresh. Um, they wake up and, and it's, it's, it's our job to make sure they have the energy in their body. So we, we want to make sure they have bananas or bagels or fruits. So, so having a nutrition area where they can get a, a, a small bite in their body so they can get to the field and, and perform to their, their best capabilities is, is always ideal. Um, so having a nice little nutrition area and, and, a, and a nice area to, to review films is obviously will, will enhance the, the experience of these guys. Absolutely. Um, and, and we're, we're going to kick off a, a 48 hour giving campaign tonight to try and, and get you these things. And I know there's a lot of people on here that want to help. So with that, I'm going to, before we get to the Q and a, I'm going to turn it over to Tim Dixon and Tim maybe can get some more in depth as to how to, how to go about helping if you'd like to help. Yeah. Thanks Zach. I appreciate it. Uh, this has been fun to watch. Uh, so our staff had met with Brian and, and, and Adam before this, and obviously we had some plans for a fundraiser that we were going to do. And obviously that didn't happen with COVID. So, so what we're going to try and do tonight is what we've done with some of our other um, teams is a, a 48 hour campaign. Um, and we're going to try and raise, basically our goal is to raise $15,000 and that'll cover the system and the locker room upgrades that, that Adam explained. Um, and the great part is we've got $7,500 in matching funds. So we're going to send out, Bree's going to put a link in the chat here. Um, and as soon as this is, as, as soon as you click on it, it's going to go live at the end of this. It'll be, it'll be open for 48 hours. Uh, we're going to try and raise that. So basically once we get to 7,500, your money will double. Um, and, and hopefully we can hit that goal and hopefully we can even go beyond that goal. But, um, we appreciate, uh, everybody, you know, taking a look at that. And if you can do something, it'd be awesome for the team and for the guys. And I know this is a the system and, and the, the upgrades is something that'll really help the program, um, on the field recruiting, et cetera. And, uh, and we're excited to try and get that done. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Um, all right, we're going to get to some Q&A, and if you'd like to ask a question, you could do so in the, in the chat window. Um, and uh, we're going to start for Coach Reeves. Uh, since you played this spring, how is that going to affect your training after season and before the fall? Will you pull back a little to avoid overuse and injury? I wish I had the chance to, to train them after our season, but, but unfortunately, you know, NCAA rules, they'll be, they'll be on their own. Um, and I think it's a case by case basis, you know, if, if they've had a, an injury during the spring or they've played a lot of minutes, I don't know if it will be as um, important to go find summer league games. Um, obviously games and experience is always important, but um, the message to the guys will be it's, it's extremely difficult to sustain from January until November that high level. So some of them might be in need of a break. Um, because we, we came back January 11th for, for a quick preseason before the spring, the spring got going. So there, there's probably going to be uh, different conversations for some, of the, for some of the younger guys. Potentially, it'll be like, how can we find you games? How can we find you experience? How can we raise that level a little bit? So for each, it'll be different. I wish we can continue training during the summer. Unfortunately, it can't. Um, but we'll be definitely looking forward to preseason in August and what hopes like what looks like a normal preseason with an alumni game and some scrimmages, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. Uh, this is also for coach Reeves from the gallery. What's been one of the biggest challenges coming from uh, D two uh, and going to D one that you've noticed in terms of coaching and what are some of the core values you've set for the team as, uh, as we look to the future of the program? 
Yeah. I, I spent a long time at Cal State Fullerton. So obviously I was, I wasn't the head coach, but I was very, very familiar with the level. And, and I was provided the opportunity at, at Pomona to, to become a head coach and, and, um, get the trade. The, the biggest differences I would say is just the overall level. The level is good at the national level. When you get to the, the sweet 16 or the elite eight, et cetera, they're all extremely good. We, we lost in 2015 to, to one of the best college soccer teams I've ever seen at any level um, in the national championship game. So it, but, but there's, there's games at that level where as long as you show up, you know, you're going to win. And that's the biggest difference here. There's no easy games. As I told the guys today in, in, in training, we can win every game or we can lose every game. Which way is it going to go? That doesn't happen there. Um, so that's been the biggest thing. And, and I think from, from a cultural standpoint, we, we want to be that blue collar team that works for everything we, we, we get. We want to be accountable. Uh, we want to be great humanistically in the community, on campus, in the department. And, and, um, you know, they're, they've done a great job of that. We, we haven't got to the community as much as we would have liked um, because of COVID. Our last actual training session before we broke for COVID was um, we were reading in school, in a local school here in Stockton. So we, we skipped a day of training so we can go give back to the community. And then uh, they went on spring break the very next day. And then I didn't see them again until until September. So we love to do those things. And I think they they have a great time doing it once they're there and, and do a great job. Yeah. I love you guys are getting out in the community. That is awesome. Um, also, by the way, if you want to ask your question directly, if anyone has anything to say, uh, you can let Bree know through the chat, she can unmute you. So just, uh, FY I want to jump in and, and, uh, give a personal message. Um, another coach for, or another question for coach Reeves, uh, as far as recruiting, how have you been able to recruit through COVID? Yeah, as I, as I mentioned, you know, thankfully we, we had our sights set on some some 21s um, prior to it breaking out. Uh, the real question will be 22 to 2022s, um, the juniors right now because it's a huge time um, in their in their high school high school careers to be identified during their junior years, and we haven't had a chance to do that. So um, there's been a lot of phone calls to to prospective student athletes and also a lot of coaches, you know, um, a lot of coaches reaching out because they want to, they want to help their kids um, find places that, that may have been overlooked, may not have had the opportunity to be recruited because of everything that's happened. You know, the NCAA has had us on a dead period, which means we can't, we can't invite kids to campus and we can't go out and recruit for over a year now. So that's been the challenge, but we're, we're doing okay with it. And we, we like our, we like our group that's coming in and, and as I mentioned, I think it's to to bring depth to the program and and to push guys that are currently on this on this screen um, to be better and and fill a small little hole here or there. I got a question for Emery. Uh, what is it like playing in in an MLS development academy? And I think Ryan Her Ryan. We were going to talk to Ryan Her before he had class, but he played with Sac Republic's development academy, I believe. So Emery's another guy that's played with the MLS development academy. What, what's that process like, and, and what do you learn from it? Uh, yeah, it was a really great experience for me personally. Um, I was able to play a lot um, and play with a lot of top quality players. And then with the MLS being a part of the MLS organization, basically. I was able to practice with the USL team um, and I was on the bench for um, like five games before I came here. So just being able to play with players that you normally wouldn't be able to, um, it makes you a better player and it makes you a better person and it pushes you. And, and you know, that's probably the reason why I'm right here with, with you all right now is because I was part of the organization and part of the team. It's funny. I'm going to keep it with Emery here. I, did, I actually, this summer, I've never broadcasted soccer before. I actually got to broadcast USL soccer this summer. So I got to see a lot of that, that level, if you will. So do you have a close association with, with a lot of those USL players? Yeah. Um, I know Eric does too. He's also spent time with them. Um, but yeah, I know a bunch of them. Unfortunately, they canceled the, this fall, this, um, this next season, just because of COVID issues. But, um, I still know a lot of guys, which is great. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for thanks for sharing the experience. Um, 
Zach, I got a, uh, a question that came in to me about yeah. how about a quick description of what it's like for the athletes day to day class training COVID restrictions, etc. So in, instead of me doing it, I'm going to I'm going to pick on Derek. Um, Derek's sophomore lives on campus. Um, Derek, why don't why don't you give the group a little little explanation of our current COVID, you know, from from checking in in the mornings and that sort of thing. OK. Um, so, well, with COVID, we, we normally, we would report to the, our locker room, right? But we don't, we don't have it because COVID and we report to, uh, the field right away, uh, seven, seven, 10 for check-in. Um, and then we train two hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we have weights right after, after, after training. Um, and then after that, we go breakfast, you see the cafeteria will open at 10 o'clock. For breakfast, we go get burritos with our teammates. And then, of course, online class. For me personally, it's been very, very hard, I'll say. I'm a mechanical engineer and like not having the on the like in-person lab or or like the professor showing us demonstrations, it's been hard with COVID. And and so the classes, I, I have four classes on Monday. I, I take them all, go go through all of them. And then, uh, sadly, since the we're in COVID, not everyone's on campus. The UC closes at six, so we usually get dinner before six. And then in the afternoon, after six, we so if, uh, me personally, I would stretch, do recovery, uh, and get ready for the next day. Do some homework, uh, watch a movie, or, or or what what whatever. Yeah, I feel like mechanical engineering classes would be hard and hard enough in person. I can't imagine uh, doing them uh, remotely. That would be next level. So we uh, we take our hats off to you, man, and and everyone going through distance learning and and everything else that comes with it. That's it's unbelievable what you guys have been through. Um, I have a and, question. And oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I think there's a lot of there's small little details he missed out on every day. They're they're doing a questionnaire, and uh, our staff is taking their temperature and and making sure there's no uh, there's nothing there that could could spread to the team. So they've done a great job of taking care of their their questionnaires daily and they're getting their temperature taken and and the masks are required everywhere on campus and um, campus you, the university took the precautionary measure of making sure they all have their own rooms, which which is a good thing, but but it's also very isolating for them. So so they they cannot mingle in each other's rooms. So training is a great outlet for them to be together and socialize and walking to get the food um, as well. Other than that, they're they're on Zoom, they're on their computers for for hours at a time, whether it's class or study hall or studying. So um, they've done it. They've done a great job and. and taking advantage of, of what the administration's afforded them. Absolutely. Hats off again. Um, question from Bill Barker, class of 81. Uh, and this is, I believe, for Adam. Uh, how does international recruitment work? It's a lot about who you know and, and the relationships or the network you've, you've built over time. You know, the, the college game has become so global, just like soccer is everywhere else in the world. Um, and so over time, we've built relationships with, with different people throughout the country, throughout the world. Um, and and uh, former assistant Luis Trejo actually took a trip overseas um, this past or January of 2020, I guess, um, and had the opportunity to look at some, some kids, a couple of which are here now um, in person. So there, there's a, many different routes a lot of international kids have to go the junior college route, maybe because their their soccer was at such a high level that school wasn't um, as important back home when they were when they were younger, or maybe they need they they didn't get the correct score on the TOEFL, which is a test of uh, the English language, which every university you need a you need a minimum score to get into. Um, so they could end up at a junior college for one reason or another, and and there's a lot of ways to to see those individuals there. Um, and, and word of mouth is, is like I said, another big one. Uh, two more. Uh, one of them is a, is a quick one. Uh, are you, are you letting fans in to the LMU game on March 27th? Unfortunately, Tariq, we, we are not, we don't control LMU's, uh, decisions, but I can't imagine in LA County that they will be allowing fans. Unfortunately, we'd love to see you, my man. So I didn't realize it said at the LMU game. I, I thought that was maybe at Pacific at LMU. Okay. Gotcha. So 
Gotcha. Um, that was from the gallery. You know who it was from. Uh, the uh, Speedio technology, last one for Coach Reeves. Uh, would that help the quality of the game stream for those watching online? Yes, you won't see the orange tents anymore. <laughs> it's big time. So that 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 should seal the deal right there. No, it's it's the cameras are the cameras are used in uh, professional stadiums across the country. Zach was just talking about the USL, which is for those that aren't aren't familiar, it's the league right under MLS, the USL Championship League. This company just signed an agreement with the entire league, so every team in that league uh, will have to have that camera system. Um, like I said, it's 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 fixed onto a pole that's 30 feet, roughly 30 feet high. Um, and the camera quality is fantastic. And we'll have an operator that can operate the scoreboard, et cetera, on the stream. So I think it from from not only from a men's soccer perspective, but from a streaming perspective for both men's and women's soccer, it, it'll be phenomenal. Just to kind of piggyback on that, I mentioned I did USL games. I actually had to do them from home. Uh, the team that I did it for was, was Reno 1868 FC. And, and the, the quality of the stream, it was on ESPN3. And I, I was worried about doing it from my house and the quality of the stream. I can tell you that that quality was phenomenal. And the USL really, really cares about the quality that it puts out in terms of video. Um, so if the, if the USL is, is using this, uh, this is like big league. Uh, for for Division One uh, college soccer to to have something like that, um, and if if again if you'd like to help to to help procure this, uh, the link is in the chat. Um, you can go in in your chat, just click on the chat bubble at the bottom of your Zoom. Uh, it was from Bree to everyone, um, and the link is there. And it's a forty eight hour giving campaign, and uh, it's uh, again a fifteen thousand dollar goal. Uh, and you can click on the link and uh, and help the the soccer team get what they need by by using that link so if anyone has any questions you can you can reach out to the paf or or to coach reeves i'm sure they'll all be happy to help um and i think that's going to do it for us tonight everyone uh, another successful meet the team on zoom so thank you all for being here thanks to to the men's soccer team and all our participants and uh and good luck guys the rest of the way and we'll see you next time and go to oh uh, tomorrow by the way we have a, a where are they now tiger talk uh, that is tomorrow, um, and it's going to be from 6 to 7. And I'm sure you have the link by now, but if not, you can inquire with the PAF, and, and the link will be out there. It's also going to be on the website and Twitter. So we'll see you tomorrow uh, between 6 and 7 for the uh, Where Are They Now Tiger Talk. Go Tigers, you, everybody. We look forward to seeing you here in Go. August. Thank you all. Go Tigers.